uh, <coughs> towards the dual aspect neutral mode is quantum physics friendly ontology of free will. Uh, my name is Thomas Barofi. I'm from the California Institute for Human Sciences. There's an exc exclamation point because we are a very small graduate school research center in the process of receiving, applying for regional accreditation. So anybody who wants to uh, know more about us, uh, come and talk to me afterwards. Or if you want to help us with an endowment so that we can do everything. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to talk about um, ontologically how does consciousness, how does conscious agency work? Especially free will or choice. Like uh, Noam Chomsky was talking about the first night, do you really choose to waggle your finger, point this way or that way? Uh, I'm going to postulate that it, it exists and then consider how. So it being free will or freedom of choice. And uh, Monday or Tuesday, there was a whole uh, uh, workshop on uh, about the um, philosophical, precise definition of what free will is. But for now, I'm just going to use the kind of vernacular definition. And briefly, I'm going to talk about the causal closure, uh, the notion of causal closure of the physical universe and the quantum reality problem. Uh, focus on what's called the Born rule in quantum physics relate uh, to end property theory of uh, McQueen and Chalmers, and relate to Orgoric theory of Hammeroff and Penrose, relate to integrated information theory, and uh, uh, panpsychism and phenomenology, uh, the necessary strangeness of this type of model, and uh, uh, verifiability or falsifiability. Um, I'm not sure why I'm in a psychotherapy session, but it is also psychotherapy and free will. But uh, this talk, I think, uh, could cure zombie phobia. If you're afraid that you might be a zombie because all the uh, materialist philosophers have all told you that free will cannot be possible, it's, it must be an illusion, uh, you learn differently. So, a um, <coughs> bit of history. I, start, I came to this conference first in 20, 2000. Uh, and then the kind of general idea was uh, quantum effects were believed not likely in the brain. That was one of the year the Tegmark decoherence paper came up, supposedly disproving, for example, uh, Hammeroff, Penrose, or Gore. Uh, essentially, uh, classical physicalist models of consciousness, at the phenomenalism of consciousness, were deemed the only seriously scientific approach. And uh, the causal closure of the physical was taken as ax axiomatic. I came, I wandered in the middle of this for 17 years and came back last year. And now, uh, this seems to be the case. Uh, uh, state of the art here. Quantum effects of many types are accepted all over biology and the brain. Uh, just a few examples of magnetic field sensors in birds and other animals, uh, photosynthesis, uh, Penrose, Hanroth, microtubules, they replied to Tegmark's uh, uh, decoherence paper. Uh, laser measures of quantum entanglement, we heard about in this conference, uh, in brain tissues, and uh, neuron myelin as a biophoton waveguide, possibly, we heard about in this conference. Uh, consciousness probably has something to do with quantum physics, seems to be the general idea now, and quantum physics necessarily has something to do with consciousness, conversely, even, is uh, accepted now. Uh, and everyone's a panpsychist or a pan experientialist, it seems, there are almost many people. Um, causal closure of the physical is still kind of considered ax axiomatic, though, but I'd say sort of. We heard some talks even today suggesting, oh, maybe that's not the case, and uh, this week. Um, okay. So, on the notion of causal closure of the physical, the physicalist claim is uh, interactionist dualist theories of consciousness are impossible because they violate the law of conservation of energy. Daniel Dennett said something just like this in, in one of his popular books, and uh, in other conser physics con conservation laws, the, the physical universe must be causally closed. Therefore, consciousness cannot have causal agency. Free will cannot exist is the claim, but that's false. Uh, why is it false? Um, uh, okay, standard text, textbook quantum mechanics. Uh, according to standard textbook quantum mechanics, the physical system evolves according to two different processes. One, according to the deterministic uh, Schrodinger equation, and two, until a measurement or a reduction collapses the wave function to a particular observation. This measurement or collapse is a non-deterministic process, um, uh, depicted here in, in Copenhagen interpretation 
uh, so the, the determinist extraordinary equator evolves the wave function and then the collapse uh, collapses it to one particular value. Um, this is a demonstration of that for the double slit experiment. You start out with the, the wave function and then, then uh, when you actually do the experiment for one particle, it collapses to one particular, uh, one particular event. Um, this is a busy slide, I'm just going to summarize it. Uh, <coughs> Uh, all the eigenstates, all the possible solutions of the uh, Schrodinger wave equation have the same total energy, right? So when then the collapse chooses amongst uh, all the possible outcomes, which can be very different, uh, like the Schrodinger's cat being dead or alive, those are very different results, but they have the same total energy because, because there is anything real in quantum physics is, uh, is, is is, uh, has the same total energy and other conserved, classically conserved physical quantities. So uh, there you go. Actually, according to standard quantum mechanics, the physical universe is not causally closed because something uh, chooses amongst these vastly different possibilities. Um, and but there is something called the Born interpretation or the Born rule. That the Born the Born rule is that the interpretation that the the wave function magnitude uh, is, is equal to the probability of the outcomes. But what probability really means is <clears throat> another question a lot, uh, for, for a lot of uh, uh, consideration. Uh, and the Born rule is, is a postulate of, of quantum physics. It's, it shows, it's, it, it, it always seems to be correct in experiments. <clears throat> But it's a postulate. It's never been proven to be absolutely true. In a single unique event, whatever chooses a particular, I guess, a particular outcome of the wave equation, uh, uh, conserves energy in all classically conserved quantities, but could be very, very different, uh, depending on which choice the universe makes when it collapses the wave function. So what is the actual reality that the Born rule arises out of? How does the universe operate when implementing the Born rule is the question. Standard quantum physics says nothing about unique single events, except the probability of distribution. <clears throat> it only applies precisely to statistical ensembles of large numbers of identical systems, resulting in the probability distribution. That's what we learn in physics graduate school. Uh, that's a bummer because a lot of what is interesting about reality turns out to be unique single events, not infinite ensembles of identical uh, systems. For example, a, uh, a world record pole vault is a unique event. In fact, maybe most everything of what's interesting about reality might actually be in some sense a unique event. Uh, there's something called the strong free will theorem and the free will theorem, both by Conway and Cochin. Uh, Distinguished uh, scientists at Princeton. Uh, uh, just to quickly summarize, it's a, a type of, it's similar to the Bell theorem, and then it it's a proof of the impossibility of hidden variables uh, for EPR type processes or Bell type experiments. Uh, and generally, it proves that if humans have free will to choose the experimental settings, then elementary particles do too, in some sense. Uh, and conversely, that free will has to be incorporated into the quantum level description of, of nature. So it's essentially a proof of panpsychism. If free will exists for us, it must exist in some sense for all of matter. Uh, and there are clues to how the choice operates in reality. Uh, according to Bell's theorem and the Bell, the Bell experiments, this it cannot function uh, parameter real. It, it, it cannot function in these three ways all at the same time: real, non-superluminal or local, and logical. So there's something uh, uh, about the way this choice operates that violates at least one and maybe all three of those. Um, the particle's free will is constrained by the condition of being twinned in, in the common coach and free will theorem, and it's generally constrained uh, uh, by, by rules. It's not just willy-nilly <coughs> as to the choice. The correlation is relatively, relativistically invariant 
That means even superluminal influence explanations cannot explain the behavior. If you think about it, and they talk a lot about this in, in their paper, this is profoundly bizarre. Uh, it, it does follow the Born rule for large numbers of repetitions yield outcome frequencies consistent with the probability interpretation. Uh, they also prove that a stochastic, a stochastic only mechanism, however, cannot explain the behavior of even particle experiments. Thus, consciousness, the free will aspect, operates somehow by a state reduction, the Born rule collapse, we call it the Born process. We call this category of theories actual theory, or a theory, that's what I call it. Uh, collapse event may be triggered by environmental decoherence, Penrose gravitational or objective reduction, uh, environmental texture, Diamond Cochins, I guess, or uh, M property of consciousness, Chalmers and uh, McQueen. Uh, there's another group of theories that propose the Born rule is an approximation or some uh, an approximation to a deeper, more detailed theory called GRW theory. So that suggests le le legitimacy to the, this approach that I'm, I'm suggesting. A theory. Uh, in a theory, this, this born process must have some <coughs> sort of free choice, not reducible to stochastic randomness. It must operate in some sense transtemporally or transspatiotemporally. <coughs> that means it's even more bizarre than a simple idea of superluminal influence. It, it must be subject to constraints of particular physical systems. That, by the way, is uh, the same as traditional esoteric energy yoga systems say, such as Qigong, Tai Chi, Sufi Zikr, Raya Yoga. They say the Qi operates the organ of a body, for example, a uh, uh, specific function within particular physical constraints or probabilities. So this is consistent with esoteric uh, traditions as well. Uh, like uh, Erwin Schroeder said in his famous book that's been talked about a few times in this conference already, What is Life? On this view, the A theory view, Quantum mechanics could be a complete theory of the physical aspect of reality, but an incomplete theory of the whole of reality. The necessity of free will and its irreducibility to quantum physics, this is Schrodinger, especially human moral choice, was one of the reasons why Schrodinger concluded conscious life is not reducible to physics. Schrodinger's view is, is like the perennial philosophy view that the existence, that existence is a nested hierarchy of being. Uh, okay, now to compare to uh, M property theory put forward by uh, uh, David Chalmers and Kelvin McQueen in these conferences, in, in M property theory, consciousness causes collapse. That's the consciousness causes collapse hypothesis. Can be made scientifically rigorous in the sense that it can be uh, made mathematically precise and it can lead to <coughs> testable <coughs> predictions. But in M property theory, um, uh, the M property that they add to property to uh, objects, uh, all it does is collapse the wave function. <coughs> so, uh, motivation for this new approach, A theory approach, M property theory consciousness uh, re resists superposition, causing collapse of the wave function. Still, if the reduction uh, selection is strictly stochastic random, because it, it's the, according to that theory, it's, it's pure born rule randomness, there is no, no free will. The, the, mis, the M property has to also, uh, uh, ins, or instead, operate free will, is what I'm suggesting. Um, uh, down here. Uh, when attempting such a new theory, remember the expert's warning about how strange it will be. Uh, Bell's theorem uh, has been called the most profound theorem in all of science by Henry Stapp, for example. And John Bell himself said, uh, the new way of seeing things, when we finally figure out what's going on, uh, will involve an imaginative leap that will astonish us. <laughs> and Anton Zeilinger, uh, who, who does these kind of experiments and is kind of a leader in the field, uh, this, is, this new theory, he says, will be so much stranger than current quantum mechanics, people attacking quantum mechanics now will long to have it back. <laughs> <laughs> Five minutes. Yep. All right. Um, this is just a summary of the orchestrated objective reduction uh, hammer of Penrose idea. So I think most people know that. So I'm going to skip to this slide. And this 
this chart so we can compare the theory content of these three theory categories, and property theory of Chalmers and McQueen, or, or Hanroth and Penrose, and A theory, uh, uh, the quantum half of neutral monism. So the collapse trigger in n property theory is consciousness. Uh, in uh, Orator is Penrose Planck scale gravity. Objective reduction in this category of theories is several possibilities. Uh, it could be purely physical trigger of the collapse or conscious, consciousness related. Uh, the collapse result is in n property theory is stochastic random, strictly born rule. Uh, it's platonic ideals, at least in, in one of their papers. Uh, the true is good and beautiful, embedded somehow in, in space time geometry. In this category of theories, it's, it, the collapse result is, is uh, influenced by free will, agency, unique events versus born frequencies, infinite rep repetition, for infinite repetitions. Uh, can these theories be panpsychic? Because I think that's the only possible way forward, the only reasonable way forward. Uh, no, unless anti superposition is, up, is, is uh, modified in the end property theory. Uh, no, question mark. It requires some level of complexity for the thing. But given Stuart Hammer's talk today, maybe, maybe, maybe it, it can be adjusted to be panpsychist. Uh, a theory, yes. Some kind of mind like aspect at, at all levels. Mind like or, or experience aspect. Um, and we can apply it to. Uh, uh, Roger Penrose's has talked today yeah. where he gave this example. The conscious, uh, we, we think uh, we make a choice uh, actually after it's actually hap it happened. Uh, and that's consistent with A theory. And A theory, A theory focuses on the choice selection me mechanism versus the collapse trigger. A neutral, non dual proto consciousness enacts the physical choice and creates the experience of choice. So in, in A theory, that's what I'm suggesting, uh, 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 the, new, the neutral non-dual part of consciousness enacts the physical choice and that creates the experience of choice. So it's both. And A theory can uh, supply ontological detail to top-down causation theories. Uh, a theory is explanatory to results of anomalous cognition or parapsychology experiments. Uh, we can, we can uh, tie it to explain uh, equal integral theory ontology and Roy Vascar's meta reality philosophy. And I'm just going to go through the conclusion. Uh, A theory provides hope for a quantum theory friendly approach enhanced with proto-consciousness aspect to create a holistic theory of actual reality. Essentially unique mac macro scale conscious physical events maintain born probabilities for mac microscopic elements for all practical purposes and also entail elements of free will constrained by physical and psychophysical rules of specific systems. It is going to be profoundly strange to our spatial temporally uh, constrained perspectives, but we have to be real about what is real. Okay, any questions? I have a question. Yeah. I was listening mostly, um, and I didn't quite see where in your A theory that free will came in, because you seem to say it was at the proto-consciousness level, but of course free will be associated with the full consciousness level. So could you explain that maybe a little bit more? Yeah, so in, in this view, uh, free will, free choice, uh, guides the collapse of the wave function to one particular outcome versus another. Okay. But it does it in such a way it doesn't violate basic quantum physics. Okay, so it's guiding, but it's not actually causing the collapse? That That's saying? right. The collapse okay. could be caused by anything. Oh, okay. This theory emphasizes the guiding to the outcome, oh, therefore nice. choice. Okay, okay. So it's taking place on an earlier... Prior to the prior to the collapse, but not causing the collapse, it's just simply a guiding. The proto-conscious yeah. agent presumably exists prior to the collapse, but okay. it's simultaneous with the collapse when the the, the choice is is made. Okay, so the proto-conscious um, agent is that me and you, or is that something? That's where I'm. That's where I'm a little yeah. confused. Yeah. Well, that's that's uh, part of the theory yet to be worked out. Okay. Because <laughs> that comes up in the in the uh, the or fourth one yeah. at all also. 
Thomas, I'm curious, if you're familiar with the position that von Neumann espoused in his 1932 Mathematical Foundations of Quantum Mechanics, in what extreme he takes the dividing line, the, me the measurement problem, and basically pushes as far to the observer, to the subject as possible, and declares at that point that there is abstract ego, devoid of content. I'm wondering how that might relate to your A theory subjects. Well, I, I think the, base, the basic structure of that idea brings uh, this type of approach closer to the possibility of affecting us macroscopically. Um, the thing about being devoid of content, uh, that's a more detailed question that I would take a longer uh, uh, description to get into. Um, in all this theory, I'm wondering, is there an attempt towards uh, obtaining experimental evidence for at least parts of the theory, or at least the mathematical proof? Is there any work? <coughs> yeah. yeah, yes. This, this needs first a mathematical structure, even before thinking about a possible mathematical proof. One, one key uh, difficulty is, as Roger Penrose emphasized today, the, the collapse, whatever goes, is going on in collapse, which is what Aether is talking about, is necessarily non-algorithmic. So there can be a mathematical construct that can include this. Uh, mainly it would have to be careful not to violate current basic quantum physics, but it has to be <coughs> non-algorithmic in some way. Um, yeah, what is random? What is randomness? Uh, something beyond that. Something, in, a, a third option. So you have uh, determinism, you have randomness, and then you have uh, conscious choice being the third option. It's, it's, it's something different than both of those. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.